G'day folks, Michael from Doom and Darkness bringing you another battle report and tonight we're playing Age of Sigma, my death against a Seraphon army. We're at 12 points using the pool comp system and I have to say for me personally this is where I think the sweet spot for Age of Sigma is. You could go up to 15 points easily and um, that would be as enjoyable. But uh, kick the tires and light the fucking fires, it's the first time playing a game at my house that's right i've got the battle mat out got some terrain and uh let's crack on and see what it looks like so here's the um the board folks and i hate that the first picture of the first uh battle report from my house is slightly blurry but what i hate more than this photo being a little bit blurry is that in the background my son's got his toys on the coffee table and between the his toys, like I'm looking at my toys on the big table, and then his toys on the little table, and I'm sort of thinking maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm just a big giant kid. I think that's it. But um, uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, let's have a look at the table and let's talk about the scenario. So I need my little pen, as always, folks. The scenario is there are three objectives on the board. There is the graveyard here in the right hand corner. There is the um, broken sorcerer's tower with the ruined wall around it. And then in the far corner, there is the ruined city that was once surely a grand civilization. Maybe something from 40k, maybe something from Azir. You don't know because they pretty much blend in anyways. Um, how this game was set up is that uh, we both had our armies and we were able to divide our armies into two forces, weighted however we'd like. We deployed alternating, depending on who won the roll-off, and, um, and we placed one portion of our force at a time. So I won the roll-off and I placed first, and then he got to place one portion of his army, then I did, and then he did. Um, the objective is, is to secure the objective. So each one of these cities uh, is one of the objectives. So the graveyard is an objective, the arcane tower is an objective, and the um, ruined city is an objective as well. So at the end of turn six, whoever owns the most objectives will win the game. For the deployment rules, you could deploy one portion of your force uh, inside an objective, and the other had to be outside in one of these three sort of sections. So either one there, one here, or one there, it was up to you where you wanted to go. So you really had to sort of decide, pardon me, where you wanted to, um, you know, were you going to secure an objective with one half of your force? Um, and then the sort of reinforcements or expeditionary force is going to come in from the side, and then you're either going to contest the other one, or you're going to try and go take the other one off the third person, or you're going to move out. You know, it sort of gives you some real options here of where you want to go with which force. So that's sort of the scenario. I just banged it out off the top of my head um, before we got started, and I think it, it sort of worked out quite well. Um, so this is what the deployment looks like, and I'll run through the list in the next picture. Here we go. So my opponent's list, from on the far right, he's got a Carnosaur with, you know, General Old Blood, um, Eternity Warden, whatever they're called, on the back of that. That thing is fucking scary, and um, he's got a lot of scary shit in this army, and I think that's one of the good things about Age of Sigma, something I used to think was bad, that, you know, I thought, oh, there's no balance here, everything is so strong, whatever. Now I think it's cool that you can just take a whole army of strong shit. Um, but anyway, so he's got the the the, the Carnosaur, then he's got three Crocs of Gore, they're going to freaking hurt. A unit of Saurus Cav, which I know they're probably not the so good. Um, when you look at them on paper, they're not so strong. But I think out of five guys, there are 20 attacks that come out. And sort of on average it ends up doing sort of six or so wounds out of it so they're not that bad they've got two wounds each and they're sort of a little bit sneaky so if you look at them you think well they're nothing um, that strong but um, you sort of write them off and you, you pay for it then he's got a triceratops over there and, and to be honest with you a stegodon I do not know what they can do I, I, I know it's got big horns it's going to hurt me if it charges and it's got a bolt thrower on the back. Then he's got this guy here. This guy is the bane of my existence. It's the Eternity Warden on foot. And as long as he's within five inches of these Temple Guard off to the left, the Temple Guard all get a bonus attack. Now this is super powerful because 
it's not like it's a general's command ability. You know, where in the hero phase, he's got that one ability to give the one unit an extra attack. It's just within five inches. He just has to be within five inches and they get that bonus passive buff. So not only does he get, you know, whatever the Carnosaur is, his general's going to be able to give him, inspiring presence, whatever, but he gets this buff as well. And then he's got the Temple Guard. Now I want to say he's only got 10 Temple Guard. Um, they've got two attacks each. They hit on a three, they wound on a three, they're a rend of one, but they've got a two inch range, right? A two inch range, and they've got a four up armor save base. Now this is pretty rough because with that uh, Eternity Ward near them, they get three attacks each, which hit on a three, wound on a three, rend of one with two inches, means when they pile in, you, you can get a lot in. Like, you can almost always, you get so many in. Um, but on paper, they're a little bit expensive. They're one and a half points per five, and my Graveguard are one and a half points per ten. Um, and the Graveguard are very similar. You'll, you'll see they're very similar, uh, but with a few little different different abilities. But, um, yeah, so I think they've probably been overcosted, but they are a very scary unit. He's chosen to hold the Arcane... Uh, fortress as such anything in here gets plus one to cast but guess what him being a true legend like myself neither of us have any wizards and here is my army and my deployment so inside the ruined uh, town we've got um, two units of 10 graveguard one unit has sword and board the other unit has great weapons in the middle we have my general he is a white king with the infernal standard and then behind that we have one unit of two morgast arakai over here on the uh, middle of the board my expeditionary force or reinforcements that's coming in i've got a unit of 10 black knights now they're not finished painting yet i've only just like today finished washing down the armor with nalan oil I need to obviously finish off the horses, do the medals, and um, do some highlights and that sort of stuff. But they're good enough to put on the table. And I've got two units of three Ushapti, which I'm going to eventually drop um, as I get more 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 stuff painted. But um, uh, they are so strong. And um, I won the turn to go first. So I, I really wasn't sure. Like the choice is, do I run into this second objective over here? And then just sit on the two objectives and make him come for me um or do i try and take one of the other other objectives from him do i just concentrate all my force in one area and try and kill his whole army and take the objectives what, what do i sort of do because um there are there are multiple options i can just run my black knights here straight into this graveyard and sit on that and i'll technically be winning but it sort of makes him free to push all his army over towards you know the ruined city there where my my general is wipe them out and you know it'll be his whole army against a weakened army of mine and then he can sort of get the two objectives or just come and kill me so i wasn't sure quite what to do in hindsight i don't know what i would have done in hindsight but i decided that sort of the, the black knights have got movement 12 and um the thing about these black knights guys is that they're really shit right so they they hit on a four, they have one attack with their lances. They hit on a four, they wound on a four. They have no rend, and they do one damage. When they charge, these guys are cavalry. When they charge, you'd, you'd expect them to get rend or do two damage or something like that. No, they get plus one to wound. So on the charge then, they hit on a four, wound on a three, and they do... And, and that's it. Pardon me, so you've got to think, like... Even if all 10 of my knights hit an enemy on the charge, I'm going to hit with five of them, and then I'm going to wound with three of them, and then he's going to have, or four of them, and then he's going to have no negative, so he might take two wounds. Um, the horses do more damage than the actual knights do. The horse, the horse have two attacks each. They hit on a four and wound on a five with no rend. Fuck, but the thing about the knights is they move 12 inches, which is, is very nice. They grow D3 models back at the end of each hero phase and they have two wounds each so i sort of see these guys as like a very much a blocker um, very much a unit that can sort of hold up other units uh, a unit that i can probably charge in with retreat out with heal up charge in retreat out with you know try those sorts of shenanigans move around the board quickly um and that's certainly what i try and use them as in this game so they they 
<clears throat> look, they suck in combat. They they suck hard in combat, but um, I think they have other uses for them. So my plan is I shoot them out here, um, moving towards the grave guard. I want him to think that I'm going to go take that grave guard, and then I move both my units of sharp D. Just start pushing them over towards sort of the middle of um, or the front of the um, my ruins. I think he's going to be coming for me, and uh, I need those sharp D in there for support. And uh, yeah, that's it in my turn, and my opponent, yep, he certainly does that. So everything comes out, the, the stead comes out from behind the, um, the arcane tower here, and his Saurus Cav, his Croxtagor, and his Carnosaur move up and move straight towards my the, the Ruined Fortress. Now you see my movement phase here. We're, we're playing this game that um, there are only certain points that you can go through or over the walls. So for the Arcane Fortress here, where his Temple Guard are, um, some of these broken these parts of the walls are um, all smashed down, like they're, they're broken areas, and they're areas that you know you can go in and out from, but you can't just go over the walls. Same here for the city, there are these two sort of entrances, one's here and one's over here around that barricade. They're the only two ways you can get into secure the objective. So I, in my movement phase, I plug this one up with um, these Grave Guard. And I move the other ones out here. That way, if he engages one, these guys can come around the flank. That was the plan. Anyway, I park my two Morgas Arakai inside, hit the barricade here, just behind my infantry. And uh, if he comes in and engages, they can fly out and pick off an, uh, uh, an opponent of opportunity. Um, that's the great battle plan anyways. And in his shooting phase, uh, the Triceratops, man... Uh, you know, it's got a bolt throw on the back of it. Cool, you'd expect sort of one shot, but it has three shots. I think it it, it hits on a four, wounds on a three, has one rend, and does D3 damage each. Um, but he gets one bolt through into my Morgas to Rekai and um, does three wounds to one of them. That was, that was not what I wanted to start with. And then uh, we go, end of the first turn, roll off for initiative, and I won the, win the initiative. Now, I want to say, guys, here... We, we play some combats out of sequence, and um, I don't know why we did it. It's like there was a whole turn of combats that we did without doing any of the other phases. Um, but, you know, who cares anyway? You, you'll see what I mean. So in my turn, what do I do? So first thing for... I put Inspiring Presence on my Grave Guard that were blocking the, the way because I know they're going to have to take either Croxagore or Carnosaur damage and it, it might be enough to crumble whatever's le left. And the big thing that I need to do is make sure I keep my units alive, at least my Standard Bearer, so I can retreat out of combat and regrow them. So even if I take a beating, as long as I've got one guy left, I should be able to retreat out and save that unit. So Inspiring Presence is uh, pretty important there. Um... And then for movement, we do this. So we have our knights. So the knights that are sort of scooting towards the, um, the the cemetery, I sort of figured, well, I think what I can do is I can, you know, 12 inches is nice. There's this little broken area of the wall here that I can get through, and I can do a charge in and around and into those temple guard, hold those guys up there. And that's what all I want to do. I just want to hold them there. Maybe do a few wounds, but, um, you know, there's 20 wounds in that knight unit. And I'm regrowing D3 models per, per turn. So um, I figured that would be good to keep them trapped there while my Sharp D and uh, everything else come in and clean up the rest of his army. So my Sharp D move up here. They do, I just really want to threat with them. I'm, I'm not sure yet if I will sort of want to come into the side that way or if I do want to move into these Temple Guard as well. Because if I have a good charge round with these Knights, then um, if the Sharp D come in as well, they may be able to really clean up some, some Temple Guard. These other Sharp D on the other side move up to make a nice trap. And um, over here on the side. So you can see, like, I've, I've, I've messed up the sequencing here already in the, the comp because you can see there's a combat that's already happened. But I'll just sort of explain what, what happened and uh, and we'll go from there. So I flew my Morgast Arakai out. Um, and then charge them into down the right-hand flank of the Carnosaur. And I was able to get far enough down there that I was, I was far enough away from the Croxagore so that they couldn't pile in um, and attack me as well. And then I managed to charge my Grave Guard as well. They had to sort of go into a conga line sort of charge to do it, but I pretty much charged them single file into the Carnosaur as well. And this sort of did two things. This 
firstly, it kept made my grave guard a wall um, in front of my Morgas Arakai so that his Croxigore couldn't come in and kill me. And it also just gave me like one or two extra attacks in on the Carnosaur as well. So um, that wasn't too bad. I'm still blocking the entrance there. I move these other grave guard back. They're going to pile in and block that up. And um, the Sharpty here are, you know, sort of set up to be a nice little trap. Sort of what I, I sort of figured that if my Arakai can... Uh, sorry, guys, I'm just getting over the sickness still, so I'm a bit clogged up. If my Arakai can um, uh, get the jump on the Carnosaur that'll be massive. You know, if I can get in on him first and do a big alpha strike on him, I'll knock down his combat combat effectiveness. And um, that's really important because it's just a simple thing. It's just one turn, but whoever gets that first big hit in really has a big impact on the game. Um, over here, this is the charge with the Black Knights. And uh, this is pretty good. So I've got one, two, three. I've got four guys in behind the, the wall that are able to go through. And then I've got two guys, I think, that are on the opposite side of the wall. Um, they've got a two-inch range, I think, with their lancers, so they're able to reach across. That's fine. So that's that's seven knights I've got on the charge into these temple guard. And, um, yeah, sorry, there's a picture there of the the charge that I've I've made with the conga line, because of the grave guard and the two Morgas Arakai. Um Combat didn't go so well, though. I mean, I uh, started off the Iraq. I had six attacks, hitting on threes, wounding on threes, minus two rend, and um, three damage each. And I only got one wound through. After you apply the rend, he goes to a six up. I think I ended up getting two wounds, and he made one six up save. And so he just took three wounds, which really sucked. Um, he attacked back. He killed one of the Grave Guard, of course. Oh, sorry, the, the Arakai's, of course. The Arakai already had three wounds on him from the Bolt Thrower. And um, some of my Grave Guard were able to put another two wounds on the Carnosaur as well. So he's taken five wounds. It's funny this because he's counting up and I'm counting down. And then over here, uh, I didn't do a single wound. Like, ten Black Knights on the charge into infantry you'd think, fuck yeah, this is going to be brutal. And, well, it was brutal for me, not for, for him. Um, I didn't do a single wound to him. Um, you know, he's got a, a four-up armor save. He's in cover at the moment as well. So he's got a three-up armor save. Um, I've got no rend at all. Just, yeah, just no hope. And he did five wounds back to me. So he killed two models and put a wound on another one. Sorry, it's getting late. Um, and this is where I'm sort of showing that we have this sort of out of sequence uh, sort of combat because I just had my turn. Now we go into his turn and he goes, and for some reason we resolved his Carnosaur's combat before we did the rest of, you know, his turn. But it doesn't matter. Um, he obviously elects to attack first and he... Um, You know, it's like we've had a whole round of combat again, and I don't know why they've done that, but <clears throat> he's um, he's finished off my Arakai, and I've done, like, another heap of wounds to his Carnosaur. So he's only got three wounds left on his Carnosaur now, but my Arakai are dead. So it's, it's sort of really weird. Um, I don't know why we did that why why that out of sequence happened that way but it certainly did it's like we resolved that whole round of combat over there before we did you know anything else or any of his movement or anything else um for his movement phase uh, the crooks have got to move up they're going to charge the grave guard uh his knights run his um saurus cavalry move up to charge at the sharpty which i'm i'm hoping he does because you know i'm going to poleaxe them and his his fucking Stegadon comes around and comes after these other guys and I was really hoping his Stegadon was going to keep heading towards sort of the the ruined uh, tower and oh sorry the ruined city and my Sharpty would then be free to either take them in the rear or um go into those temple guard but he's he's moved them towards the Sharpty and I I don't know exactly what the Triceratops or Stegadon's going to do but uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to freaking hurt Yep, opens up fire with the bow and does uh, two wounds to those Shapti. And then he makes the charge. He, he just 
that was like the perfect one too. You know, he shoots me with the bow and then gets a charge straight into me. Uh, and I think, oh, I don't know, I just got this thing in my head that this charge is going to make all my sharp teeth just explode into dust. So we, we start resolving the combats, and, and these photos are after the combats have all been resolved. I'm, I'm not trying to take the picture in the sequence of the attacks or anything like that. But over in here, with the battle with the Croxtagore, the Carnosaur, and the Graveguard, all the Graveguard got absolutely killed to a man. And this was, um, the majority of this was all from the Croxtagore. The, the Carnosaur did uh, very little, I think. And uh, this combat worked out so much better than what I thought it was. I thought this Stegodon was going to hit my Sharpty and they were just going to explode. Like he's going to have a massive amount of um, impact kit that, that did massive multi-wounds or anything, but he only did four wounds total. Um, so he knocks one Sharpty off. My Sharpty attack, attack back and I just roll, roll through the roof. Is that even a thing? I just roll amazingly um, and did 11 wounds to it. And yeah, it's only got 10 wounds. It fucking dies. Two sharp D just chopped that fucking Triceratops apart in one freaking turn, which is very, very welcome. Um, and these knights just continue to fucking die. So in between this happening, I have grown them back, um, I believe. Yeah, I grew one back from um, uh, during my hero phase, but uh, oh my god. So he's done another six seven wounds to me he's killed three more knights and put one remaining wound on one more and i think i haven't no nope, that looks like it. i haven't killed a single temple guard it's just they're you know they've got the two inch range so you only need to have what five of these guys in they're getting 15 attacks um it's really fucking nasty um and then we go into my turn and this is what it looks like so my uh <laughs> i retreat my black knights they run out of there catch you later it's all right i roll the dice and i heal up another one or another two i think i got two back so even though i've taken you know quite a few wounds um you keep just adding them back on you know and adding the two wound models back on makes a real big difference so i sort of figured here that i'll run them away he can come after me if he wants, which will sort of pull him out of the, the objective. Um, but I might just run out, charge him, run out, charge him, run out, charge him. That's sort of the plan anyway. Um, meanwhile, my Sharpty moves straight up. Now, what I want to do is I want to charge them into this uh, Eternity Warden, and I want to kill that fucker. That's, I don't care if the unit of Sharpty dies, but I, I think I really need to kill that fucker because... With these Black Knights, I can probably charge him in and charge him out and charge him in. I can do that all day long. But if these Temple Guard are getting three attacks every fucking time, it's not going to do any good. They're just going to fucking kill me. But if I can to kill that Eternal uh, Eternity Warden, I'll get rid of that buff. And then maybe uh, they've got a chance against them. Um, yeah, that's about it. Everything else just sort of moves up. Shafty move up. Um, the rest of my Graveguard, my, my Great Weapon Graveguard, start moving through the little hole ready to go and I've been this whole game up until now I've been forgetting about forgetting about my infernal um, banner and my six up ward save to sort of save my guys but to be honest with you it's 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 really fucking useless um, and this is just a picture of after charges so the sharp you make it into the attorney warden but I had no choice like I had to go into the um, uh, the temple guard as well so I know that's going to be painful my sharp D over here going to the Saurus Cavalry. I know I've got that all day long. And then I charge my Great Weapon Grave Guard into the Croxagore. Um, I sort of... Uh, it's sort of a shitty position here. Because the Croxagore do a ton of damage. So I know I have to kill those first. And that means his Temple Guard are going to get to go against my Sharp D. And I don't think they're going to stay alive long enough to attack the Tyranny Warden. So, in hindsight, this was a mistake. I should have just charged my Sharp Tin to his Saurus Cavalry, my Graveguard into his um, his Croxigors, and then that way, you know, I would have attacked with my Graveguard, fucked his Croxigors, he would have attacked with his Saurus Cav, not done a lot to my Sharp D, and then I would have Polaxed him in return, and this other unit of Sharp D over here would have been alive. But this is the difference, I suppose, between charging with two units as opposed to charging with three. If I charge with two, I attack, he attacks, I attack. 
you know, with their alpha strikes. And if I charge with three, I attack, he attacks, then I attack, and then he gets to, to go with his, the remaining ship. But he gets to have an alpha strike in that sort of sequence as well. Um, yeah, it was just, that, that was actually sloppy of me to, to charge that way. Um, and after combat, yeah, I, 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 the fucking grave guard, man, they, they wreck face. <clears throat> I put my, um, white king's general ability on them that gives them an extra attack with their weapon. So they had three attacks each. My champion has four attacks, hitting on a three, wounding on a three, one rend, one damage. They're like fucking temple guard now. And, uh, kill the Croxagore down to one wound. There's one wound left on one guy. I, I couldn't believe I didn't finish off the unit, but whatever. Um, and then against the, the Saurus Cav, yeah, the Sharpty do five wounds. So it was actually pretty bad as far as the Sharpty go for a full strength unit. Um, he only put one wound on me though, so certainly won that round over there. But on the other side of the table, it wasn't so good. So his Temple Guard just piled in and just killed me. That's that's just what I did. The Sharpty didn't even get to go. Um, and like I said, it was just my mistake for, for charging uh, too many units in. Um, we go into my opponent's turn, and he makes this... Uh, this is a, a brave decision, a bold decision. I suppose he figured New or New Hill's losing over the other side. And at this point, we sort of realise that, wow, his Temple Guard are really probably the, the best unit he's got on the table. Like, they're really doing serious work. So they march out of the objective and head over to my forces over there. And um, I sort of thought, so at the end of the sixth turn, the player that holds the most objectives wins the game. So he could have sat in that one objective and I suppose what would have happened is I would have ran my Black Knights into the other one, held two, won the game. This way, if he marches out to kill me, He might march out and, yeah, actually wipe my forces out here at the Temple Guard, hold one objective, and then I'll only be able to hold one other, and it'll be a tie. So I was surprised when he marched out here, because I figured I could just scoop in behind him. But um, but I suppose he was sort of in a situation where he, he had to. It was a real make or break. So off go the Temple Guard with their Eternity Warden standing behind him for the buff. Uh, there's just another picture of the the temple guard on the march and uh these are the combats it's, it's pretty quick without you know any shooting really or any um magic at all it's just you know um heroes at command ability move charge combat you know most of the shit's already in combat so the, the turns go really quite quick um over here on the right with my grave guard and the croxagore and so forth uh, I, I really just had to kill that Croxagore. Um, I, I just had to fucking kill him before he attacked. I think he, his Carnosaur attacked before everything else and maybe killed three Graveguard and I couldn't just allow him to sort of come back. Because the Croxagore has got four attacks um, and does two damage each. So he could actually kill my fucking Graveguard if I chose to attack with the Sharpty first. So yeah, I did that. Killed the Croxagore. And um, I, I lost a Sharpty uh, for it, but um, things aren't too bad. And my opponent wins the initiative. That's the worst. Um, I think that's what happened before when I said there was that out of sequence. Um, a lot of combat with the Carnosaur, that was where the initiative changed over and, and, um, and things jumped around. But... Uh, Nevertheless, he wins the initiative and um, he charges and he makes it with his temple guard. His temple guard get in and surround my Sharpty and uh, that's doing for them. He's going to attack first. At least I know that if he attacks my Sharpty first with the temple guard, my grave guard are going to be able to jump in on his on his uh, Carnosaur and probably kill that before he gets to attack. They've still got the plus one buff on them from last turn and um, oh, it's getting close. Um... Yeah, it's exactly, the, the Sharpty got killed by the Temple Guard outright, the Grave Guard killed the Carnosaur outright. Um, that's just, that's it. And then this is just what it looks like at 
after my, when we go into my turn. So I move my um, Black Knights back, so they were retreating and healing up. Uh, they've pretty much healed up to full now. They move in behind the Eternity Warden and so forth. They're holding that objective at the moment, or well, two of my guys are in there. Um, and uh, I'm sort of figuring we'll go for the big sandwich and I'll try and get a rear charge in. Uh, my other unit of Grave Guard push up. They're going to try and get in at the freaking um, Temple Guard. If I make this charge, or if I make this charge and get into the Temple Guard, you know, I'll have the Alpha Strike, my Grave Guard, Alpha Striking his Temple Guard, and that should basically just fucking win it for me, unless I completely whiff. And um, the fucking Black Knights failed their charge. That sucks. But the Grave Guard makes it in, and um, that's okay. I like this picture. That's that's okay. Um, after combat, yeah, it was fucking glorious. I mean, the the Grave Guard again. They've still got the the sorry. They've got the um, my White King's ability. They've got three attacks each. Four coming out of the champion. Um, it was all. I think I had eight guys left because they keep growing back as well. So it was eight guys. It was like seven twenty one. Um, 25 attacks, hitting on threes, winning on threes, negative one rend, and uh, the temple guard got absolutely killed to a man. So that is a nice, nice change for sure. I'm going to my opponent's turn then, and um, I mean he attacks back with his Saurus Cavalry, actually kills three grave guard, which is a, a pretty good result. And then he charges his Eternity Warden into the remaining grave guard. I've only got what five there. Um, so if he has a good round of combat here, uh, he could kill my grave guard, and then it's just my general or my my general, the White King, against his Eternity Warden, and he's got two Saurus Cav and my Black Knights. But my Black Knights can't fucking fight their way out of a wet paper bag, so you know who knows. And the the fucking Eternity Warden does it. I think he does two damage each. This guy, and um, oh, it was so frustrating. So he did the damage from the attack, and then. It killed four guys. So I had my banner left. I thought, thank fuck, I've got my banner left. That's fine. I can retreat out. I can heal them back. And I'll be sweet as. Um, but it, then we remembered that his... Like, I get plus one to my battle shock rolls because I'm within five inches of something or other. And fuck, I, I couldn't believe it. I've got a ten leadership. Um, I lost four guys... All I needed to do was not roll a 6 to keep my stand alive, and I rolled a 6, and he died. So the fucking Eternity Warden just charged in and poleaxed that unit by himself. And, um, yeah, oh, I did I did get to attack with, you know, a Grave Guard first, and a handful of wounds, wounds on the Eternity uh, Warden, but uh, this is the epic moment, or not quite the epic moment, but this is the, the decider of the game. The Black Knights are coming in, for the rear, they're going to charge him up the clacker. Meanwhile, the White King moves into position to stop him getting in and securing the objective. It's the White King. He's at the hot gates, and he's going to do it all alone. There's just another picture of my White King being epic. He's like, come at me, you lizard scum, you scurvy fucking chameleon wannabes. I was going to say something about... Uh, the, the color of these um, Saurus Cav, but that would be totally inappropriate. Um, my Cav make it in the rear, and yeah, like uh, they can just get in there and hold them up now. So I've pretty much just won, just because I can hold the 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 objective. But um, that's no fun. This is, I think, this is turn. Oh, I tried to charge my White King in, but I reckon I failed. Yeah, I did. I if I can try to charge him in there because. I wanted to be glorious, but um, but I failed the charge. This is turn five. I think it's the end of turn five. And after combat, like I kill one Saurus Cav, and he he does six, seven wounds to me, just with those two Saurus Cavalry and the Eternity Warden. He does seven wounds to my Black Knights, and I did one wound to his his Eternity Warden, and maybe one wound to his Saurus Cav. That's it. Like the, these fucking knights are. Excuse me for yawning, how rude. These knights are fucking terrible, man. Um, they're just fucking bad. That's all I can say. 
Um, he had his attacks. He killed some more. When, when his turn, he he sort of battled, and then we uh, we did it, folks. We we charged it in, and it was White King up against Eternity Warden with the the Black Knights in the rear, and that's ha where the game ends on this picture. So I think this is a great picture. I wish my knights were painted properly, but um, it doesn't really matter. I wasn't able to kill the Eternity Warden. He wasn't able to kill me. Knights weren't able to fucking wipe their ass in the dark. They're fucking oh, so bad. But um, but they look cool, and um, and that's where the game ended. So it was a draw technically because neither of us secured the objectives at the end of the day. But um, the the, the, the objectives sort of set the battlefield well so that we could have a good fun battle. And it was enjoyable. We both had a really good game. This was really fun to play. Um, the battle report probably doesn't actually convey how enjoyable this 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 game was to to play. And uh, really looking forward to the next game. So I've got uh, Storm Stormcast Eternals coming around tomorrow morning. We're probably going to play the same objective on the same table. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, I think we'll change it up though, so that you get one point for holding the objective per turn. Um, yeah, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.